Hello, I'm Scooter Pie, and I'd like to invite you to join me for this extra fun episode of Good Night with Scooter Pie. So if you have a hula hoop or hula hoops, I urge you to go get them out now. And even if not, you can have an imaginary one because our guest tonight is hula hooper and performer extraordinaire, the one and only Pinky Special. She is going to share her joy with you. She does a performance for us, just for us. So please enjoy my interview slash performance by Pinky Special with a little bonus appearance from the great Dubini. Enjoy. So Pinky Special, how are you doing? How's your quarantine times? It's all right. It's all right. It's, um, I mean, it's been rough for sure. Yeah. Or deny that, but yeah, but it, it seems like you've been keeping busy. I've seen you, um, out and about isn't the word for it, but I've seen you active on social media with um, a lot of performing and some teaching. Yeah, it's been wonderful. It's oh, good, and um, a big help <laughs> to my brain. <laughs> Before this time, were you teaching a lot of uh, hula hooping and performing classes before this, or is this a new thing? Well, I used to teach um, uh, years and years ago, and I, I just, it's not, um, I don't know, I found, it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> I love teaching, but like, uh, you know, renting a room and making sure you have enough students and all, all that kind of stuff. And then carrying like 10 hoops, like dragging 10 hoops on the subway and you know, all that kind of stuff. Now we're doing it online. I mean, it's free. I don't, I don't even have to eat dinner. <laughs> I can eat in class. <laughs> and, and that's another special skill being able to eat and hula hoop at the same time. <laughs> It is absolutely a special skill, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> today I today I practiced um, hula hooping while putting on my lipstick. Oh, how did that come out? I mean, it looks great. I, I fixed it up a bit since then, but it was messy. <laughs> this is good. I'm going to keep, keep on practicing that one. That's fabulous. So let's back up a little bit. So you been performing in different ways and in, in the burlesque scene for a really for a long time how many years has it been it's been oh man it's been um 18 wow august wow congratulations <laughs> um yeah you're that's like one year before me um because i remember the first time i ever saw you perform it's interesting because you're you're world world renowned known um, for your specialty of hula hooping, but I remember the first act I ever saw you do was at the Slipper Room many moons ago, and it was an act about like a, a scientist who who took a potion and got a third boob. And I saw you, and I thought, wow, this performer is really something special because at the time I hadn't seen anything like that before. So, um, and the years have gone by, but now I have to say I love seeing your hula hooping you're extremely talented but my favorite act of yours and i got to see you do it in person um in the fall the last time we were together in person is um it's your your many pasties act where <laughs> where you have not just the traditional nipple pasties or the butt pasties but also ones all over the body including this magnificent little pasty chapeau hat and it is all done to to the drum song of Wipeout. So how did you come up with the idea for such such a um, m wild, multi-pasty act? Well, you know, um, Vic and Bob are uh, some English comedians. My husband, John, is English, and he loves Vic and Bob. And they um, did a fantastic skit, which was, let's see if I can do it on the screen it was like it <laughs> <laughs> was like a boob was that the funniest thing you ever saw it was like boobs I know <laughs> skit where with the elbow boob and, the, and then that is it 
all stems from that. It all, I must have three acts that involve like. Oh, you do. You have three elbow boobs. Elbow boobs. <laughs> I love it. We never know where we're gonna get inspiration from. Yeah. And plus, that act is so athletic, and it really like just shows off your your physicality because it's tricky to just isolate. Like I haven't tried a, a tassel on the elbow or on the knee or on you the should, head, but you should tell. It's so much fun (laughs) (laughs) it's pinky's idea of a good time okay so pinky was about to perform for the great dubini show but first a card trick okay that's fine i don't need to see okay scooter yeah last time i saw you i was in new orleans last year and i was sitting at a cafe and and eating breakfast and you walked by got up and made it outside you were gone weird i didn't see you but that's cool no you didn't see me and i didn't have your number on my phone so i couldn't be like hey scooter i'm here so i think i messaged you like a week later and said hey i saw you in new orleans but that's right what a small fucking world man you just yeah <laughs> I can't quite figure out how this works. Should we do this? Yeah, this is good. All right. Um, So uh, here's what we'll do. Since there's two of you. Hey, Pinky, are you holding your phone right now? Yeah, I'm not. I can't figure it out, dude. Just point it at the screen. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's There you go. I can see you both. Yeah, there there you go. Perfect. You can see? I, I see Scooter, yes. I don't. Okay. Okay, thank you. The car in a pill bottle back there, okay? It's behind me, okay? So so I basically, I, I made a prediction, okay? Um, so Pinky, I'll let the two of you pick a card together. I'm going to let Pinky pick the suit, and then Scooter will pick the value, okay? Okay. Um, so I would say steer away from Ace of Spades, Queen of Hearts. The, those are the very common ones, and that's what they're picking. Even though you're not going to be able to pick the exact card, um, so just you, but you but you can pick either of those, whatever you want to do. Okay, so Pinky, you pick a suit, any suit you want, clubs, hearts, spades, or diamonds. I pick hearts. What? I pick hearts. Hearts, perfect. So Pinky pick hearts, and then Scooter's going to pick the value. You know, ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, jack, queen, king. Whatever you want to pick, that's your pick. Okay. What do you want? Oops, I'm here. I pick nine. Okay. Now, are you sure? Because I want to give you the opportunity to change your mind. You don't have to pick nine. You, you're, you're, you're. I'm happy to have you stick with it. But whatever you want, if you want. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with nine. You're going to stick with nine. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, can you guys see over here? There's a pill bottle behind me. Uh-huh. There's a card inside of it, okay? I'm going to take it out. What? I can't. Is it the nine of diamonds? It's nine of hearts. Nine, I mean hearts? Yep. <laughs> that's what you said. That is totally what I said. Yeah. Amazing. That Amazing. just occurred right here on Good Night with Scooter Pie. Okay. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll let you go then. This seems stressful. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe I'll come in and hula hoop later. Okay, perfect. All right. Hey, Pearl Daly is here. Hey, Pearl. Okay. Love you, dude. Hey, I love you. I'll see you later on. Nice to see you. Scooter says bye. Bye, Scooter. Hey, I want Scooter to come on my show. I'd love to. All right. Let's do it. I'll, I'll... Yeah, hit me up. Great. <laughs> Thank you.
five, six, seven. Instagram live or whatever people are clapping and stuff so you so you can hear people I haven't done anything on that yet that's good yeah you should definitely well you'll go on Doobin's show and you'll see it's really fun yeah you know, you're hanging out with everyone in the audience because you're laughing together and saying different jokes and stuff oh that's great speaking of jokes I used to be part of this little show called shaken and stirred and we used to do this stuff called shenanigans where we would do contests with the audience and you we used to have a joke off and you were at one point like a ringing um joke off champion for us do you have any new jokes or an old joke i am fresh out of jokes (laughs) i don't have any more jokes i never have to say them anymore I know. I need. I need some new jokes. I really am in the market. If you hear anything, here I'm gonna just Google. I'm gonna look up a joke. Okay, I'm just gonna Google jokes, and then I'm we're gonna learn a new joke right now. Okay. Trouble. The first joke. Okay. This is the this is the first joke that's coming up on the internet when you Google jokes. Okay. Um. What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. That's our new joke. Okay. (laughs) I know, I really thought about telling a joke during each... Oh my god. (laughs) What is my problem? Have you ever combined hula hooping and joke telling? No, but I think I would like to. I, I would like to do that. That is... I would like to do that. I just need some new jokes. Like every class, tell a new joke. Yeah. I'm just thinking about so, it. So with your uh, classes, um, is it like all skill levels? Anybody can do it? Like if, if somebody just happens to have a hoop and has never done it before, they can just jump on in? Yeah, it's, it's um, I mean, it's for all skill levels for sure. And um. Well, the first Wednesday of every month, I'm going to be teaching beginner, like beginner, beginner classes. So for people that like can't get the hoop around at all. And then look at my crazy hair. And then um, the rest of the time, I try to um, keep it interesting for advanced students, but also give some more beginner instructions. <laughs> so I think most of the, my students... Um, are people stuck at home and they have large hoops. So the large hoops are a little more, um, people don't use large hoops to do separation and things like that. Now I have a question. If somebody's just starting out, cause see I'm spoiled or I was spoiled and I used to have hoops that you like personally made for me that unfortunately I don't have anymore cause I'm an asshole, but I'm in the market to get a new one. So what size should I get? So somebody who's like beginner level, 
Because I looked up online and I had no idea. Uh, yeah, it's a little daunting to look up online, right? Yeah. Stuff out there. Well, so it kind of depends on what you what you're after. But those hoops I made you, they're kind of uh, on the smaller side, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, for you, I would definitely get a polypro type hoop. <clears throat> and those ones are probably, were half inch polypro hoop. Um, half inch being the, the, the thickness of the, the tube. And, yeah, and then mine are 32 inch um, in circumference mm -hmm. circle. And it's, I mean, it just depends on how detailed you want to get with it. I could go into a technical discussion, but um, the smaller you go, the easier it is to do hand tricks and things like that. Um, the larger you go, the easier it is to hula hoop around your body. I so, see. so do you think it's good to get maybe like a, if you're going to seriously start getting into it, to maybe get a variety of different sizes? Well, I mean, I would always say yes, <laughs> but um, if you want to do separation, you want to get all the same size. So, but any kind of hoop you get, you're going to get used to it. So even if it's hard when you first get it, you're going to get used to it and it's going to be your baby after a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you do decide to go... Because well, I think 32 is kind of a small hoop. For me, it was a challenge to get used to it. I think I was doing 34s or something. Or 30. I mean, it's not even that big of a difference. but <laughs> And it was a big challenge for me to get used to them. But um, people that do a lot of hand tricks think these are huge. <laughs> so when you say hand tricks, is that like what you showed us when it was going like around your wrists and like that? Yes. Yes, that stuff, and if I could hold this up again, I could show you some other things. Like, I guess they call them like isolations. And... <laughs> I get like, a lot of like this kind of thing. I'm not the mm -hmm. best at it, you know, like, you know, this kind of, kind of yeah, they do a lot, a lot more like on body kind of stuff. I I particularly picked thirty two because I wanted to practice juggling, but I also wanted oh, to be able. To... Wow! I'll show you. So these are small enough. It's been a while, actually. Oh so, my god! So these are small enough so I can hoop. I could still hula hoop about my body, but yet I could still juggle them. I didn't want to go too small because I just was like, I don't want to torture myself. <laughs> the smaller it is, the faster you have to hoop to keep it to stay up. That's, that's what makes it The difficult. smaller it is, like the smaller the circumference of the circle. Yeah. The, oh, yeah, because the more you'd have to move your body. So, okay, I get it. So that's like for kids, for like little kids, they have like the really big ones. Right, right. So... Um, so you started, did you start doing burlesque and performing for a while before you started hula hooping or did you start hula hooping first? I did, um, burlesque for a couple of years, I think in like two years or something. I, well, I think I, I started hula hooping in maybe 2004 and I, 2004, 2005, I think I started burlesque in 2002. I was totally inspired by Miss Saturn all the way. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So you saw, uh, for those who don't know, Miss Saturn is, is a really awesome uh, burlesque performer. Hula hooper. I guess context context clues could have told you that. So you saw her perform and you knew her, and, and she was so amazing. You are like, I want to do that. And you Did you teach yourself, or did you take lessons somewhere? Um, I, I Well, I learned a lot from, well, uh, well, first, I, my first thought was that I was going to learn to hula hoop just as a means of getting exercise, you know, mm -hmm. like, have fun, 
and trick yourself into exercising, you know, it's a lot, a lot more fun that way. And so that's why I got into it in the first place. Um, but then hanging out with Jenny, Miss Saturn, and she taught me a lot of tricks. And so I didn't ever take any like official classes, but I learned a lot from watching her or talking, hanging out with Jenny. So I would say I, I mean, I definitely learned it all on my own, but with Jenny's heavy inspiration. <laughs> what uh, element did you have the hardest time learning? Um, la, 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 la. Do you mean, <clears throat> well, as like a beginning hooper, it, it, the knee hooping is the hardest, probably. Mm -hmm. What is it with the knees? <laughs> It's, it's definitely the hardest area for sure. But um, if you're talking like multiple six hula hoops is, challenge, is a big challenge. So when you first started learning, how long did it take you to get up to having like a whole bunch at once? Um, so let's say I remember working on four when I was in France and that was like 12 years ago. I could just barely do four at all <laughs> and now what's the maximum number you've gotten up to well that you just saw me out it was six i read it six right and yeah that, two years to get that trick and, I'm and you just, make it look so easy i'm just getting there i'm just getting there. <laughs> my hands weren't strong enough was one of the problems isn't that stupid mm -hmm. how do you like We're doing the hand stuff yeah, like the two in the hand. Mm -hmm. That was one of the hardest parts. And then the other part, the other difficult part is separating the middle hoop, the one that goes there. <laughs> How do one. you even do that? I, I That looks so magical and mysterious to like separate them when they're around the body. Do you just have to move in two different directions or something? Well, you have to isolate all the parts of your body. So you would isolate... <laughs> your chest mm -hmm. like right and then mm -hmm. I mean if you're really good at just that little area if you can imagine just moving those uh -huh. that's 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 a really good <laughs> oh wow and then this area right mm -hmm. but then you gotta have your knees together this area and I usually have a little pump going mm -hmm. so it's those four isolations i guess if you did seven you could get one right there wow like here and one there those two would probably go at the same maybe i don't know i would try it <laughs> that seems incredibly difficult i feel like you know here's a dumb thing here's a dumb thing scooter it doesn't matter how hard the trick is it just matters that it looks good and uh -huh. most people tell the difference between three hoops and six you know, so who gives a shit? <laughs> it's for me. <laughs> yeah, I guess it makes it more exciting for you to, like, add more. Are you going to keep on adding more just to challenge yourself until you're, like, completely covered in, in hoops? Well, you know, I feel like, um, obviously, it's nice to have those skills. <laughs> like, seven. I, I Currently, my set of hoops is seven. So... I think the next trick I would do would be um, three on the body and then two in each of the hands. Whoa. Yeah. Two in this hand and two. So that would be four, five, six, seven. My hands are kind of weak, so i got to do some shit. <laughs> are there, like, exercises you can do to strengthen your hands, or you just have to practice a whole bunch? I think I got to do exercises like, you know, I just been doing, I call it canning. I got those big cans of beans that I've been doing like arm shit and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> canning. <laughs> but that actually is helping. It's making a difference. So <laughs> I'm going to keep that up. <laughs> cross training. That's my CrossFit. I do hula hooping and canning. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when you first started out, like how... Okay, or for someone who's just starting out and they, they want to really get good at it, how often would you recommend practicing, like, a week? 
Well, it just depends. I mean, if you could practice every day, that'd be amazing. But a couple of times a week would still be, like twice a week would still be, you would still improve for sure. Mm -hmm. If you want to get out a couple of times a week for sure, <laughs> you easily could do that. You know, as long as, like for me, like working that six hoop trick, my hands would get tired and then I, I couldn't do it for very long. You know, I could only do it. So like if my hands got tired today, if I pushed it too much, then I can't do it tomorrow. Right. You don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah, like, I just can't. I just start throwing them. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm glad that you have the space in your home yeah. to practice and to do it. <laughs> I hit less in this apartment than my old one. <laughs> oh, God. It's a bit of a lot. <laughs> so, uh, what, I don't know when this is going to actually be up and airing, but what, what shows do you have coming up that we can catch you on virtually? I, the next um, show I'm in is going to be in the Bindlestiffs on June 1st. It should be a Monday. They're doing a live on YouTube and Facebook every Monday. So it's from awesome. 7, 9.30, I think, is when it is. I'm going to do some sort of hula hoop thing. Thang. Yeah, so that's exciting. I'm excited about that. That's so cool. I'll have to check that out. It really is, like, such a silver lining that even though we are only doing shows online right now, but, like, no commute, and you can do shows, like, that would normally involve a ton of travel, and that they're able to conv combine uh, performers from all over the world right now and bring us all together. So, like, that's pretty awesome. Really magical. I really am yeah. digging it. I'm really digging it. Yeah. And you're doing some um, virtual slipper room shows, too? Because I know that was really, like, a home base for you. Right. Yeah, we did. got the pleasure of being in the first one. So that was exciting. Yeah, that was just the let's see what happens show, you know? Mm -hmm. Do some art so we can forget about being in fucking lockdown and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. And um, where can we catch your classes so we can learn from you? Yeah, so every, well, first of all, every Wednesday, 6 to 7 EST PM um, on Instagram Live at Pinky Special. It's P I N K I E Special. So I have to be difficult. I got that I E instead of Y. <laughs> Regrets. Anyway, um, Pinky Special. And if you check out my Instagram TV, you can, there are two classes so far. You can check out past classes. So that's really. Thank you for joining me for this exciting episode of Good Night with Scooter Pie. I hope you have a good night. We'll see you next time.